might have heard that old saying, don't cry over spilt milk. Turn the other cheek and move on. Yeah, I know, that's my worst joke yet. But there's an aspect of truth about it as we look at how to manage the cow shed through those first eight milkings after calving. Most likely, you'll be working with three or four herd groups, dry cows, springers, the colostrum mob, and the milking herd. On some farms, there's another sizable group, the mastitis or antibiotic cows. So here's some tips to help you keep this mob to a minimum. It's worth taking your time with colostrum cows to make sure that only uninfected cows enter the milking herd. So I like to follow six basic steps. First, we want to wash the teats if they're dirty. So I wear some gloves and I use a low pressure hose and wash those teats by rubbing them to get all that muck off. Next, teat spray the colostrum cows before milking. This reduces the spread of bacteria and also makes milking more comfortable for the cow. Strip every colostrum cow at every milking. That way we can remove the, any remaining teat sealant and also detect mastitis early in this high risk period. That done, we can get on with milking. Teat spray again after milking, making sure we get full coverage of the teats. We want to use the rapid mastitis test or RMT test on every cow that's due to go into the main milking herd. That way we'll find subclinically infected cows that we might otherwise have missed. We need to strip milk from each quarter into the paddle. About four or five good squirts will do it. And then we tip the paddle up to make sure the milk's even. Then we squirt in the same amount of the RMT solution as we've got milk. The next bit is the really important part. We need to do a slow swirl and anything that goes thick and gooey tells us we've got a subclinically infected quarter. I find the RMT test to be a quick and effective means of identifying whether there's any potentially subclinically infected mastitis cows in the herd. As you can see here with a simple swirl and pour, we can identify if the RMT solution is bringing up a positive. And if they're positive, what then? Well, if they are positive, obviously they're going to need to be kind of drafted out there and kept with the colostrum herd and tested again the next day to see if they're clear. So a final tip here is a simple one. We need to ensure that your teat spraying is effective. It's going to be one of the most critical parts of your mastitis prevention program. So the teat spray is going to kill any bacteria on the teats, as well as it also contains an emollient, which is going to ensure good teat skin health. Once the cups come off, we need to make sure that all four teats are adequately sprayed, which can be tested later with the paper towel test. If you have a good block of iodine on the paper towel, then you know it's a job well done. It's also important to make sure you have the correct teat spray recipe. Mix teat spray in a separate bucket, not in the main tank, so the mix is the same each time. Make it simple, with each volume of teat spray, glycerine and water, making up the total amount to pour into the main tank and put a teat spray chart on the wall so there's no confusion. It's also best practice to implement a teat scoring program on your farm. This can be as simple as randomly checking the teats of 50 cows every month and recording the condition of the teat skin and the teat ends. If more than 10% of the cows have dry teats, we typically focus on three things. Are the teats dirty prior to the cups going on? How effective is the teat spraying? And have we got enough emollient in the teat spray mix? If more than 20% of the cows have rough teat ends, then we need to find out why. For instance, is the vacuum set correctly? Are the pulsators working? Or are we over milking the cows? It's simple, yes. But if it cuts down on tears over spilt milk, then all we hear is the sound of laughter all the way to the bank. Watch all our videos by downloading the NZ Pharma Tips app for Apple or Android today.